now i invite dr tarachan joshi and dr arun agrawal for chair the session tarachan joshi and arun agrawal now i invite dr madan mohan gupta uh, for delivering uh, his talk uh, he will be telling about his experience at eternal hospital about neuroimaging and neurointervention he is a consultant neurointerventionist at eternal hospital jaipur over to you dr gupta and patient hearing so i will uh, discuss and its interpretation and use for the therapeutic role as a neuro intervention so the goal of the acute stroke imaging as we are hearing since morning there are four p's like parenchyma pipe perfusion and penumbra so that's goal has to be uh, achieved either by ct scan or mri if you are comfortable to diagnose and treat on the basis of ct or ct angio that's a good enough no need for the mri if you are confused if you are not sure then definitely you have to take the better imaging modality like mri so uh, everybody knows that uh, this yellow part is a ischemic core and we have to save this blue part an umbra so in the imaging modality non nccct non contrast ct mri for the vessels ct angio mr angio dsa carotid doppler and perfusion images so everybody knows that the ct scan has been used for the exclusion of the hemorrhage and if we can find out this hyperdense mca that would like to assure that this patient may need intervention if we will delay then then there is definitely formed in fact after two days so the imaging should be read on the basis of the territory just like aca mca pca or post cerebral post circulation like cerebellar ica pica and if there is a watershed in fact that will give the different hemodynamic uh compromise that the patient may have any occlusion restrictive lesion occlusive lesion on from the arch of aorta to the brain so now i will share my experience over here in the neuro intervention this is a case of the 65 year old gentleman he had a stroke on the 31st august on his retirement day his power was 0 by 5 and nhs was 15 he immediately rushed to the hospital from the nearby place around 120 km he did ct scan over there and it was showing hyperdense mca on the right side aspect was 8 to 9 this was the clinical picture at the time of the boy he is having gaze paresis you can see and he is obeying commands but moving only right upper limb and right lower limb not the left side so we, we took this patient directly to the cath lab without wasting time so door to needle time was less than 20 minutes and door to reperfusion time btr was 45 minutes we did cerebral dsa on the dsa we find that the occlusion of right internal carotid artery from its origin there was no circulation in the brain from the right side we started mechanical aspiration thrombectomy with the strand retriever and aspiration catheter like this we try to grab the clot and final result was this the whole tachycardia flow in the mca all the branches are filling up this was the clot as 
and trip into the centrifuge. And this is the post process CT. You can see small infarct on the right MC territory, especially basal ganglia and the insula, and small repercussion bleed in this area. This was the clinical recovery after 45 days. He can walk as well as he showed us I can run also. So we were very happy. He is a doctor. Now he is practicing himself also. He is a 65 year old gentleman. So this was the first case. Another case, 54 year old gentleman came in the three hours, right, MC, right MCA stroke on the diffusion weighted MRI. We did DSA. There is a tight stenosis over the right IC origin with the distal thrombosis. There is a T occlusion after the ophthalmic artery. Complete recanalization, 53 flow. We didn't standard it because it was the acute phase. We did angioplasty. And after that, after two, six weeks, we did standard. This was the clot and this was the CT scan, very small in part. This was the recovery after the procedure, just after the procedure in the ICU. Another lady, she came in vacuum stroke, just like we are discussing today or regarding the mechanical thrombectomy score 24 hours. So according to the Dawn trial, this patient was uh, entered into this scan. The NHS was 17, wake up stroke. And there's a small infarct. Only the infarct is forming over here because of the good collateral. So on the CT angiography, there is a complete occlusion of the common carotid artery from its origin. There is no ECA, there is no ICA. But there is a good collateral try to forming from the left side and the ACA as well. After the DSA, we did the mechanical thumbectomy, all right ICA as well as MCA has opened up. And this was the clot. And this is the female. Now she is doing good activity. She is independent. All the scans were good. So this was the corona time. Our thank you to our team who did the best effort in that time also. Now the posterior circulation stroke. This patient did recently. Thank you for a colleague who sent this patient on a time to save a life. So this was the infarct in the cerebellum. Midbrain was, medulla was spared. Small infarct in the pons. And there is no big infarct. The complete occlusion of the basilar artery, no vertebral artery was filling. We immediately took this patient also in cath lab. This was the patient presentation. He was altered sensorium. Uh, we did intubated him immediately because his response is empty only. We did immediately mechanical thumbectomy, right vertebral artery is occluded completely. So this was the clot and we retrieve it from this one. And next day in the ICU, the patient is following command, extubated, showing his tongue, moving upper both the upper limbs as well as both the lower limbs as well. So this was the posterior circulation because on the time, with the mechanical thumbectomy, bilateral vertebral arteries were occluded. So now, carotid stenting. Everybody knows that if there is an occlusion in the origin, at the origin of the right IC, or in any of the ICA, it may cause hemodynamic stroke distally. So this is a 53 year old gentleman, right-handed, recurrent TIA in the left MCA territory. This was the tight stenosis on the ICA. We did this thing. And this is another case. I want to emphasize on the use of the filter because we did this uh, carotid stenting and we entrapped this clot in the filter. So if we would have not used this filter over here, spider, this can cause MCA stroke during the procedure. I have encountered three to four patients in which the clot has been trapped in the filter, around 30 patients. Intracranial stenting in acute stroke. This patient came from Kota after 16 hours of the stroke. Same, this is the internal water shed in park. Patient was having aphasia and right upper limb weakness. This was the ICAD over here, and this is the distal MCA. We did DSA, loaded, and after that, we put a stand over here, and there is a complete recanalization TK3 flow. Patient was lifting her right upper limb as well after the procedure. So in the case of recurrent TIA, this is a left middle cerebral artery and the distal internal carotid artery, significant critical stenosis. We did angioplasty stenting after failure of the best medical management. Patient is doing well. This is a basilar artery. There's an occlusion. 
as well as the stenosis. We did a stenting and angioplasty over here also. This was the cases from the ischemic stroke. Now I will tell about the subarachnoid hemorrhage, hemorrhagic stroke. So this is a grade four SH. This is the coiling, balloon assisted coiling, stent assisted coiling. He presented with the SH right side ptosis also. Two aneurysm were there, right PCOM as well as the right anterior parietal artery. Both were taken up same time and the, both the coiling were done immediately. Patient is fine. This is the bite neck, ACOM aneurysm. Also coiling was done safely. This is the aneurysm which is incorporating more than 280 degree of the artery. So it is very difficult to put a coil over here and very difficult to place a clip also. So we did a reconstruction with the stent and we put a coil after that. This is a wide neck aneurysm. We did the flow diverter treatment for this. This is a wide neck. So this is the flow diverter which has been placed over here. She is doing good. This is a case where the lady presented with the right side third nerve palsy and this was a large right cavernous IC aneurysm. Flow diverter was placed and after the six month patient has partial improvement in the aplasia and nearly good recovery in the process. This is a recent case where the patient presented with the epistaxis. Her hemoglobin was 5 only because of the, this hemorrhage in the spinoid sinus. This aneurysm was ruptured and you can see there is a small aneurysm over here also. So this artery was dissected over here. We did coiling as well as flow diverter. After that, this nasal packing was removed. She is doing good. Her life is safe. This is in... 46 year old gentleman presented with the seizure as well as the left sided weakness. There was a right subcortical parietal hemorrhage. Uh, on the investigation, we found that there is a dural AV fistula and we embolized with the onyx and he is doing good. He is, and he is uh, now able to walk and power is around 4 by 5. This is a interesting case. This patient came with the recurrent episodes of headache. He was having this CT scan since last two years back. Then he came to present it to us in our OPDs and we did an MRI. In MRI, we showed that on the red arrow, there are some flow voids as well as on the diffusion weighted images, there is some hyper intensity. We suspected it may be a venous ischemia or it may cause, it may have vein of lave infarct, vein of lave sinus thrombosis at that time and maybe possible it is a dural fistula over there and we can see right IJV thrombosis over here. So we did angiography directly and we found this is a dural AV fistula. Diagnosis was made and concurrently the onyx embolization was done. He is doing good. Embolization, complete curable embolization of dural AV fistula. This is a cerebral AVM. It was also embolized. For the epistaxis, if it is a straight segment, we have placed a stand graft also. For the carotid cavernous fistula, coiling can be done and it is easily uh, salvageable for the vision loss. And this is a spinal dural AVF glue embolization. These are the flow voids where we found out. And then we did the angiography. And after the spinal DSA, all the feeders were occluded and the complete curve of the spinal dural AVF. So in the eternal hospital since two and a half years, from the 15th Jan to 15th 7, 2020 to 2022, our team has performed 436 processes in which the diagnostic was spinal and spinal DSA was 292. Therapeutic was 144, and in which the ischemic stroke interventions was 80, and hemorrhagic stroke interventions 64. So it was done under the leadership of Dr. Suresh Gupta sir, Dr. Sushil Tapadia, Dr. Yashpal Singh Rathod, Dr. Surendra Koshia, Dr. Arun Agrawal, Dr. Tarachan Joshi, and team neurocritical care and team neuro rehabilitation. Of course, emergency, radiology, and cath lab team are always there, and I am thankful to the eternal family for giving me this opportunity, and we are doing the work which is shown by the jury doctor also and we are doing in Jaipur also. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gupta. Uh, you have presented a uh, large number of cases uh, from your intervention and uh, you are doing excellent work. I congratulate you for over 400 cases and a high success rate. Now the floor is open for any question. So there is no question. We end okay. up the session here. Yeah.
other than the diffusion flare mismatch we can use any other imaging modality or any mismatch like uh, flare vascular high intensity diffusion flare uh, diffusion bitted imaging with versus swi mismatch can we use as a marker for thrombectomy or thrombolysis yes yes uh, for the diffusion flare mismatch as well as swi flare mismatch yes both the both can be used because swi can show the collaterals if there is a good collaterals on the swi images that patient can be taken for the intervention the outcome will be definitely good so don't go directly on the diffusion flare always look on the swi also because it can guide you regarding the uh, reperfusion bleed as well as for the outcome of the patient or any specific guideline that we can directly patient ship to the cath lab if we suspecting large vessel occlusion without ct or we can do ct in cath lab so the, the, this study is going on uh, after some time the cath labs are the first place to uh, do the ct scan if patient came with the acute ischemic stroke within the window period patient can be taken into the cath lab do a ct scan vaso ct exclude the hemorrhage do a angiography over there if there is a large vessel occlusion do a mechanical thrombectomy so it will give definitely good outcome if there is a small vessel occlusion you can give a ivt intra arterial tpa so that will also helpful but the guidelines has not come yet. any trial is ongoing if a patient came in out of window period or after 24 hour of acute stroke onset but patient imaging so diffusion fair, fair mismatch large vessel occlusion good collateral then can we could intervene these patient with mechanical thrombectomy any trial or any study after 24 hour uh, i am not about after 24 hour suppose patient uh, show diffusion fair mismatch good collateral then definitely can be helped for that i can say like this uh, most of the patient if they are preserved after 24 hour it means that there is a less infarct or more penumbra definitely if they they are showing their watershed infarct if there is significant ostl or the occlusive lesion definitely the stenting or angioplasty or revascularization help them immediately now i invite dr tarachand and dr Aruna Agrawal to present a moment to Dr. Madan Mohan Gupta.